Sometimes watching a movie isn't enough. You also want to eat that movie. And that's why there's Movie Recipes. Today we're going to show you how to make Christmas Story 2 eggnog. Start off by finding the most classic and beloved Christmas treat you can imagine. Then pour only a drop of it into your blender. Because even though it was perfect the way it was, we need to needlessly update it despite the fact that nobody asked us to. Next you'll want to put in a vegan hot dog, because clearly there's no meat to this product whatsoever. After that, you'll want to find a drumstick that's been needlessly used for slapping. Renditions of classics often contain a lot of unnecessary slapstick. What's that? You didn't laugh at that joke? Well then clearly we're making the right recipe. Naturally you're gonna need stars. Look deep into the back of your fridge for the leftover star fruit that's expired way past its prime. It hasn't aged well and you probably forgot it even existed, but it was cheap and available and that's all that really matters. Finally, water it down as much as you can so you can't even recognize what it was originally trying to replicate in the first place. Blend whatever charm it had left into a creamy liquid ready to be pointlessly forced down your throat. Be sure it's poured into a glass that looks festive and tasteful, deceiving you into what you're about to subject yourself to. Finally, garnish with a lit cigarette and enjoy. Well, what other reaction would you have expected? Welcome to Earth. I'll trade you this cigarette butt for your coat. Oh my god, it must be my birthday! <laughs> Sucker! Apologies, my psychotic, kind ex-girlfriend just landed after being blown up by a PlayStation 3 that wasn't even plugged in. It's a long story. Anyway, I have worse taste to wash out of my mouth. For example, why the hell have we been trying to kill a Christmas story the past 10 years? Remember what used to be that little film that not too many people knew about, so you kind of shared it in the hopes that it get more attention? And then it somehow ridiculously backfired to a point where now it gets too much fucking attention as a goddamn enterprise? I suppose in many respects this is expected, but by god, they just market it in the most obnoxious way! There's never a sense that the advertisers are doing this because they like the movie. It's so obvious they're doing it because it's popular and will make a quick buck. I want a Motorola C139 with texting games and graphics. Don't run the bill up, kid. Ho, ho, ho. No! Even if that is the reason behind it, you're not supposed to be so lazily blatant about it. This is where Christmas Story 2 comes in. Nowhere else will you find the needless, desperate, money-grubbing whore element of Christmas than with the very idea of this film. It's such a horrible thought that even the trailer got probably the biggest amount of down votes I've seen in a while. I don't think Hitler could come back from the grave and get as many down votes. If people say Christmas has gone commercial and lost its soul, this is the product to prove they're right. Because yeah, 30 years later, we just demanded that the rest of the Christmas story saga be told. We just couldn't sleep until that obvious cliffhanger ending was addressed. It just makes me realize how much Christmas has become glorifying buying a bunch of bullshit that we don't actually need. 
What's next? It's a Wonderful Life 2? A Christmas Carol 2? The Star Wars Holiday Special 2? When's it gonna end? I swear, this special is so bad that not only has it put me off of the original story, but it may have put me off of Christmas altogether. Hello. Hi, Benny. It's Hyper Fangirl. How are you? Not well. Just found out that Clueless is a fucking ripoff. Well, I need your help. I finally know what to do to the nostalgia critic. <sighs> Don't you ever learn your friggin' lesson? No. And 20 grand says neither do you. I'll be there in 10 minutes. But you don't know where I am. I know where everyone is. So, with the ceremonial swearing of a Channel Awesome producer who's already reviewed this... Merry motherfucking Christmas, you cut. This is Christmas Story 2! We open with what I know you've seen an abundance of in the first film. CGI backdrops. Oh, it's like I'm back in the 40s already. To the film's credit, they do try to sepia tone it so that it looks a bit more like the first film, but it comes out like the Lifetime Network and the Hallmark Channel took a piss on the same negative. A few winners had passed and yet another one had come screaming over Lake Michigan in the middle of the night. The narrator is voiced by the writer of this shit stain, and though doing a decent mimic of the original author, his shaky voice sounds like he's saying these lines with a gun to his head. Randy was a fledgling Buck Rogers fanatic who had his own way of braving life's little conflicts in this world or any other. They force me to write this or they take away my other testicle! I mean... It was a beautiful day in Indiana. And there I am, with that same dumb round face and the same penetrating 2090 vision. Yes, the more we say the word same, the more we hope it'll mentally brainwash you into thinking that they actually are the same. They're not, of course, as we see the father is now played by Daniel Stern, portraying him as an overcooked Rodney Dangerfield. I'm telling you, boys, if I own that team, things would be a whole lot different. Great! Another role I can do with Bug Eyes is speaking out of the side of my mouth! To the actor's credit, the kid playing Ralphie actually does a decent job. He captures the spirit of the original performer, but still manages to make it his own. The rest? Well, remember that bad community college play you had to watch a long time ago? You're letting this Joker cut in? It's dog eat dog out here! Stake your claim! Son of a bitch! This is how I really am! I swear I'm not playing a character! Son of a bitch catchphrase! But of course, maybe I like Ralphie's acting in this because he barely gets a fucking line. Practically 90% of his dialogue is the voiceover narration. And it never shuts up! The old man maintained his well-deserved status. The old man lived for the thrill of the hunt. The old man's scheme was always the same. The old man remained positive in his encouragement. The old man was a veritable cliche repository, as the old man would say. Why don't you just marry the fucking old man? Jesus Christ, the audiobook has less narration than this! We don't need every single moment of life explained to us, guy! Then I opened the fridge. I look confused because I heard a strange voice. Then I closed the fridge because if not, the cold would get out. I then drank my soda and began walking back. I started with the left foot, then proceeded with the right foot, then proceeded with the left foot, then proceeded with the right foot. Drusilla Gutrad, my sweet Drusilla. Oh look, the only character in the movie to have less lines than Ralphie. The out-of-place millennial girlfriend who you, of course, want to see get with Ralphie because, well, she's hot and doesn't say anything. And apparently those were great qualities in the 40s. The rest of us would have to settle for being with her in our dreams. Oh, hey, daydreaming, because first movie. I could help to refresh your memory. <laughs> Ew. That's a weird addition to have in your fantasy. In fact, let's have the perverted Ralphie counter on the side. I just get the feeling we're gonna need it throughout this film. Oh, no, Shelly. You saved me from a fate worse than death. No, no, you're still in the movie, honey. One of the subplots in this film is that Ralphie and his old man are looking to buy a used car. Ralphie sees the car he wants and has yet another fantasy where he's a blonde Al Franken, 
and sneaks an ad for what he wants in the paper because, like I said, first movie. Speaking of which, guess what after all these years still isn't fixed? So, wait, they can afford another car, but not a new furnace? Well, I guess it does give us a barrel of laughs that clearly is never opened. Meanwhile, Ralphie fetishizes more at school about his millennial girlfriend. And just tell me he doesn't up the creepiness in this scene. For 45 minutes twice a week, Drusilla and I could be together close enough to smell her lavender scented shampoo. Oh yeah, that's definitely going on the counter. Someday, my beauty, there'll be a veil upon that hair and I'll lift it so our lips can meet as they pronounce this man and wife. Jesus Christ, kid! Put a few more on there, that, that was really fucked up. A little less holiday spirit. Mr. Parker. And change your pants. From the top, people. Hmm. You know, I wonder what was poking me in the back of my head. Oh my god. So Rappy sees that his car might be bought by another buyer. So, in a move that I'm sure invites no negative repercussions whatsoever, Ralphie gets inside the car so he can go through those negative repercussions I'm sure he won't go through. You know, I think there's other ways around this, Ralphie, rather than taking off your pants. Because first movies. So they destroy the car and the owner says he has to pay him back $85 to fix it. Which back then is like, I don't know, a billion bucks or something. This of course calls for another stinking fantasy. Your wish for absolution, my son. Dead kid walking. You know, wouldn't his daydreaming have grown up a bit? I mean, he's a teenager, but he still dreams like he's a 10 year old boy. It makes no sense. Gee, let me think about where I'm gonna vacation to next year. Maybe I can eat the taxi driver. So he tries to ask his father about getting the money. You need a little extra dough for Christmas, right? Why don't you get something nice for your mother? I'll give you a buck. I'll give you two. Huh? Could I have any three more? Why? What? Oh, sorry. My supposed to be funny outburst has been replaced with soothing hiccuping and constipation grunts. It may not make you laugh, but I'm Daniel Stern. I'm used to it. It's Christmas, right? Higby's will hire anybody on Christmas. We'll go tomorrow. So he gets an idea to get a job at the local department store. I'd be the kind of part-time holiday help that legends are made of. My fellow Americans. Oh my God, stop with the fantasies. I think both Scrubs and Family Guy have less cutaways than you. I still know nothing about you, but the audience is supposed to support my shallowness for some reason. God, and it doesn't stop there. There's still like a million more fucking fantasies throughout the rest of this film. Jesus, could someone just put me out of my misery and shoot me in the head? I've got him in my sight. All right, critic. Time to show you the true meaning of Christmas. To an Arab person, this might seem strange. Hi, Critic! We heard that you were getting the blues about Christmas, so we decided to show you why you originally loved one of your favorite holiday classics. The wanton violence so glaring, the constant underage swearing, creepy Santa is not sharing, for scaring your kids. Please say you're done. Chinese singing that offends you, that lamp we know you jerked off to. I don't think it worked. This must be a really bad movie. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They go to get a turkey for Christmas, but Papa's not happy that the price has gone up. But thankfully, some real comedy is ready to start as Ralphie and the gang get ready to begin their jobs. <laughs> Baby. 
<sighs> but hey, near infant suffocation is understandable in anybody's first day. That's why they don't get fired and instead just transferred to different parts of the store. Observe. Excuse me, miss. Care to sample our new fragrance? <laughs> You can manage that. Now I expect these banana cream pies not to be touched by the end of the evening. <laughs> and of course, this results in low jinx, which is kind of like high jinx, just not trying as hard. That was a wee sound effect, folks. We are desperate enough to put in a wee sound effect. Oh, 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 clearly someone's been learning from the masters. Naturally, even these fuck-ups aren't enough to get them fired. What do you have to do, scalp a patron? As they're given yet another wacky job to partake in. Just stamp both copies, file the yellow one in the tray, and send the pink one. You think you can handle that? Let her roll! <laughs> But Flick just finds it's too tempting not to put his tongue inside the pipe. Because, again, first movie! <laughs> and there's your holiday image, folks. A prosthetic version of pipe cunnilingus. And a happy new year! After that, they have to stand in as elves for a really mean-spirited Santa Claus because... Death Dizzy! Death Dizzy! Ho, ho, ho. Oh my god! I remember that! I remember that! Fast move! This film sucks. Ho, ho, ho. All right, what's your story? What do you want? How about a new pair of gloves that disappeared in between shots? Yeah, get off your mind as and make some money. Yeah, so she can spend it on punch boards and cheap gin. It's weird because the Santa here is a lot more mean than in the last one, but of course, because this door seems anti-progress, they decide not to fire him and get a new one. This results in what I suppose is supposed to be Ralphie standing up for Christmas. You can all go home. No more Santa for you. He is not worth it. But naturally, it's just a fourth segue into... I... whatever the hell this is. Are you crazy? It was fire, man! Oh, bullshit! Haven't you heard? This place is like a cult! Once you go in, you can never fucking get out! You have to get a blowjob by the decapitated head of one of the customers in order to finally get kicked out of this place! Ugh, I need a drink. Thank you. Decoderings that make Ralph ah! wake up Fully getting his ass wet How are we gonna get out of here, Benny? Don't worry, all I need is a bobby pin And the complete works of Lewis Carroll Thanks Yeah, no problem <sighs> Meanwhile, the father tries to go fishing on fake CGI Bird Lake As he plans to make fish this year's Christmas feast, seeing how it's cheaper Even though the gas money driving out there repeatedly is probably costing him more than the damn turkey would. Whoa! Whoa! That's a monster! Uh, it looks like your hole may be a little too slow. Yeah, I know what it looks like. There, hold this. Yeah, too bad he didn't make that hole for a fish that was supposed to be big enough to feed your family just a tiny bit fucking bigger. <gasps> Maybe it costs more money. They lose the fish, which results in, big shock, the father being a total dick again. Sorry, just trying to help. <laughs> Haven't you done enough of that already? You know, I'm not quite sure what you mean. That means that you jinxed it! That's what it means! It means that everything was going great till you showed up! You know, the father in the first film was tough and had his flaws, but he was still very likable. This guy is just a complete asshole from beginning to end! What's his encore? Singing great balls of fire at the burn ward? Our own employment picture grew significantly dimmer that evening when I lost the first and only job I'd ever had. Hey, there is such a thing as Christmas miracles. I knew I'd probably never experience a Christmas quite like this one. And I wasn't alone. My mother realized that in a sense, she too was about to be relieved of a job. That one day soon, it would be time to let go of a son. 
Is that what we were supposed to be taking out of this? I think this is the first time it's being addressed. It's like saying the main focus in Alien was supposed to be the cat. I don't think you have the attention in the right spot. Ralphie has a talk with his father because apparently seeing a grown man bitch and moan like a whiny brat against the flattest forest in the world can't help but open a guy up. You know what they say. Sometimes it's the last key in the bunch that opens the lock. I know just what that means. Good. So, with his newly found fortune cookie philosophy, he goes back to the store to ask for his old job back. And what does he do with his all too important second chance? Pfft, try to fuck it up, of course! What the fuck am I watching right now? No, I legitimately have no idea. He's having a spasm attack because this weird Gestapo guy isn't ringing the bell right? So much for learning any responsibility. What a deer bag. Lousy cotton-tail klutz. Sorry, I'll pick it up. <sighs> Sir, uh, that five. Guy in the corner is collecting money. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, you do. <laughs> Wait, he punched him in the gut, yet he's giving his money back? That's the kindest abuser of teenagers in reindeer suits I've ever seen. And to be fair, I've seen a couple. As he's counting the money, he sees he's still one dollar short. I just need a dollar. One lousy dollar. What's in the pocket, Schwartz? That's no fair. No, this is another one. You can't have my lucky buck. Okay, I'm sorry. I have questions. One, a dollar's worth more than it is now, but I think it's still possible to get one. Hell, even his cheapskate father was offering him one. Two, why the hell are they taking off his pants? There's literally no reason for it. Three, it's still Ralphie's problem, so why the hell are they stealing from him? It's not like this other kid played any part in ruining the car. Nothing like a little Christmas theft to get in the giving mood. Christmas. Give me the fucking money! So he wants to pay off the dealer while walking by one of those leg lamps because... Don't me! When he sees a poor family in the alley. Looks like a white Christmas tomorrow. Well, that's the way it should be, right? Yes, sir, it is. Merry Christmas. And God forgive us for being in this film. Everyone! So he decides to take the money he was going to pay the car dealer and take the poor family out for dinner instead. Well, I'm sure glad being butt-raped in a jail cell isn't as important as getting food to a family that obviously was finding ways to eat already. And don't get me wrong, I know it's good to give over the holidays, it makes a lot of sense, but for the love of God, if you're going to jail, fucking jail, I think the poor would understand if you gotta use that money to pay something off, to keep your ass out of jail. I mean, that's not being greedy, that's just surviving, that's just being a human being, trying the to- The dumb clothes we all had to wear, the triple, quadruple dog dare. How the hell did you get out of my office? I just made an extra door with what I had lying around. What are you? Adoring Christmas, as you should be. We just don't want you to lose the holiday spirit, critic. I swear, if I see your face again, I will lose your head in a cornfield! <laughs> okay, that was really dark and I don't condone that kind of behavior, but nevertheless, PISS OFF! He goes to the dealer telling him what he's done and, of course, the dealer doesn't care. Skip it, you're done. I am? Yeah, merry ho-ho and all that, you know, spirit of the season. So I guess the moral of the story is a bailout is bad, unless the guy in charge of the bailout is bailing you out. Sounds like a corporate America lesson to me. Apparently he's not the only one who gets bailed out. The mother used the money she was saving up on the side to buy a fish claiming that their father caught it. Look at the dinner your father caught just for us. My brother never heard what really happened, and hasn't to this day. I just pray he never sees this movie. Oh, who am I kidding? Nobody will. They wake up the next morning to look at all the boxes with clearly nothing in them, and they have, I suppose, a merry enough Christmas. Thank you, thank you! I told you you'd like it. 
You want to get him socks? Well, last time I saved your ass handing over my life savings for a fucking carp. My God, what a terrible human being! You guys get everything you wanted? I'd say so. I think I just saw a rat in the kitchen. Isn't it beautiful? So Ralphie apparently got his old man the lamp. Guess he spent part of his don't go to jail money on that? And his father rewards him with, what else? The car he always wanted. You know, for a family they've been building up as financially struggling, they do get each other some fucking nice gifts, don't they? This, of course, catches the eye of our millennial. You should really leave the car- Holy shit, it talks! I'm sorry, I just assume you communicate through blinking or something. Do you remember the other day in front of Higby's? Antlers, sleigh bells? Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna act out the trope like I'm embarrassed and you're not gonna like me for that even though you obviously are. Takes a lot of guts to stand up to a jerk like that. <laughs> and they all died in a terrible car accident very shortly after. Oh my god. Which is why the original is so much better! <laughs> the pole trick we wanted to try the... Yeah. Two minutes. Give me a second. Another job. Oh. The pole trick we wanted to try. That's the it. dad actually wants a tie. Ralphie's telling such a big lie. Ouch, 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 ouch. Uh. Uh. Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you honestly think these actions are gonna win me over? I just, I don't. No, 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 no. You break into my home, you kidnap me, you stalk me. I've had not the fuck Jupiter with you! I was just trying to get you back into the Christmas spirit by making you like Christmas Story again. I love Christmas! I love Christmas Story! Uh, it's you I can't stand! I mean, I swear, my life would be so much happier if you would just disappear from it! Wait, 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 wait. What are you trying to say here? I hate you! I hate everything about you! If there was a likability scale between 1 and 10, you'd be negative pi! You've been outlawed in 28 states just so people don't have to talk to you again! If they were to make a Kelowna of you, you would be called Essence of Annoying! If cancer got cancer, you would be the one they would name it after! Knock knock! Who's there? Nobody! Because nobody would ever want to see you! When people ask monks what the meaning of life is, they say stay away from your dumbass! Your Beethoven's lost symphony! Death to joy! Would everyone in an orange sweater, brown hair, glasses, and a likable personality please raise their hand? You're too stupid to even get that joke! On the evolutionary scale, you're the only one that's walking backwards! You're the Surgeon General's warning on every pack of cigarettes! Give me an I! Give me an H! Give me an A-T-E-U! I hate you! Okay, critic. I guess that's how you feel. Wait, what, what are you doing? I'm just gonna go then. Wait, that, you can't do that. It's, it's cheating. This wasn't how it played out in my head. Somebody was trying to make a Christmas story to eggnog, and I thought, well, I'd give it a whirl. Wow, that was a bad idea. Santa Christ, I need your help on something. I just threw out this really annoying person named Hyper Fangirl. Well, what did she do? <sighs> she tried to make me appreciate Christmas. Wow. You're a douche. No, 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 it's not like that, though. She did all these terrible things, and she deserves to be punished for it. Well, last I heard, she was flying 30,000 feet through the air, completely set on fire. Sounds like punishment enough to me. You're not gonna be on my side, are you? I don't think you're on your side. This dumbass movie. You filled me with so much hate this Christmas, I forgot about the things that really are great. Christmas Story is overplayed and over-commercialized. And yes, it's ironic that a film based in simple truths in a small town environment would be blown up into this marketing monster of kitsch, with this piece of shit sequel being the crown of it. 
But that doesn't mean what was already good and simple can't remain good and simple. Hell, if looked at the right way, this sequel can show why the original is so unique and innocent by comparing it to its bastard cousin that's cliched and corrupted. In all its complex marketing, I can see once again that simple appreciation. I don't think I would have seen that if it wasn't for another simple... Santa Christ, can you grant me a Christmas wish? Sure, I'm Santa Christ. I need you to take me back before I start this review. Absolutely. Heck, it saved me from this terrible eggnog. You know what you did was wrong, right? And you know that this isn't gonna work, right? <sighs> Look, um, I was gonna put on a really bad Christmas special. You wanna make fun of it with me? <laughs> and I'm married to Mrs. Christ. <laughs> Seriously, 20 guesses who it is. The Da Vinci Code got it wrong. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I wish I wasn't such a softie.